Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. And we do have our next author on the line, Anne Corke uh, TV. Uh, Anne, how are you? And I hope I didn't uh, foul up that last name. I just try to do the best with live. How are you? You did it very well, and I'm very well also. Oh, Thank great, you. great. Okay. So we have a panel, just to let you know. It's not just Neil Haley you'll be talking to. You'll be talking to Eric uh, Remmel from Life Improvement Radio, who is our broadcaster, and also my other co-host, Peter Elvich. So we'll go first question for me, your background, Anne. Then they have some a lot of good questions they have for you. Well, I, um, I'm from New York City originally. And I was born and raised there, and I originally worked as a freelance journalist for many years before I started writing fiction professionally, although I did always write fiction. My first novel came out in 2012, An Unexpected Guest, and Shining Sea is my second novel. All righty. Um, so but I, it kind of a curveball question, just to kind of see what, you, what your thoughts are on this. If if you could not write, like it was just physically impossible, you couldn't write, what would you do instead uh, to um, project your passion to the world? That's a great question. Um, if I couldn't write, I think to begin with, I would probably drive the people around me nuts um, because it's, you know, a very important natural form of expression for me and always has been. But, in, you know, I think that we, I, I believe in um, the kindness and the importance of small acts. And so I, I think that I would try to, to in, in that way, just to begin with, um, uh, communicate directly with people the things that I try to direct, to communicate through my books, the, both the thoughts and the beauty. Gotcha. Cool. And I was I was looking at some of the information on the bio of your book, um, The Shining Sea, um, and talking about you know some of the storylines and things like that. It kind of spans the life of a family. Um, did you what what gave you the motivation to write this story? Was it something based on your own life, or just just something you've had in your mind you've been working through over the years? How did you get your start on this book? Well, Shining Sea it follows a family after the death of a father who is a World War II veteran and was a prisoner of war in the Pacific during World War II, over five decades, from 1962 to the present time. And I, um, you know, I hasten to add that although it, it does cover a great deal of landscape, it starts in Southern California, it goes to, uh, there's a part in Phoenix, Arizona, there's a, a hundred pages that actually take place in uh, in London in the 80s and then off the western coast of Scotland on these remote islands called the Hebrides. It comes back to the U.S. There's Woodstock, etc., etc. It's not very long. It's 276 pages. Um, but what I wanted to talk about with the book, what I was exploring personally, was the effects of war on, I should say, the effect of historical event and in particular conflict on um, society in general and families in particular, particular. So I just made up a fictional family to do this with. But I got the idea from something very personal, although nothing in the book is autobiographical even remotely. Um, my father died uh, four years ago, he, right before my first novel came out. And my father was a um, – he was in World War II – he served in Italy as infantry and then as a code breaker. And when he died, that was 60, more than 60 years later, he was in his 80s, we discovered that he was still carrying his honorable discharge card, which he wasn't carrying for purposes of veterans' benefits. He was carrying it because it was clearly the seminal experience of his life, the most important one. And as I said earlier, I'm from New York City. I grew up two blocks from the central gates, the of um, Columbia University in the 60s and 70s. And my very earliest memories are mixed with the protests against Vietnam War. So I kept yeah. thinking about that. I kept thinking about the contrast between what my parents clearly carried in their hearts and shared with myself and my sisters 
because they were, after all, our parents, from their experience of World War II, in contrast to my own experience of war, initial experience of war as a civilian, you know, what I saw watching, because um, I was much younger than my sisters, I, I saw things maybe little children wouldn't see, and I would sit down with them, and I would watch the body count every night on CBS with Walter Cronkite. So I had a very different impression of involvement in U.S. involvement in war. And that contrast and the way that it, it can bring families together and, and take them apart was the spur for for the novel. Of course, when I started writing it, it, it took all sorts of different directions, but that that's where it came from. How did your family react to that since, you know, they kind of, they were older, but they kind of experienced, you know, a lot of the similar uh, things growing up. Did, did they have any, you know, feedback on the book? Did it kind of resonate with them? Um, well, I, I don't know. They haven't said. <laughs> to <be honest. laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot I, I there. Haven't, I haven't heard. Um, I wrote an, a uh, op-ed for Time magazine, which talked a bit about it, and one of my sisters uh, did write to me after that and say that you know she felt this was so true, and she has been thinking about the same thing herself. But um, beyond that, I, I really haven't heard. I can't answer that question. I'm sorry. Gotcha. So, Anne, so, are you just, concerned? Yeah, no, now, Anne, uh, no, Peter, it's my turn. Uh, we'll go, go, go round robin. Yep. You can ask two questions in a row, but I, I'm really interested. This is timely as can be now because we don't know what our next current uh, uh, climate is going to be involving war in the next four years. So, in that thought process and the discussion about Vietnam and protests and, and, and different things and looking at war in general, what are your concerns coming going forward? Well, one of the things that I wanted to talk about with Shining Sea, and I, I, do, I do want to add that although that is the running background in it, it's not a war novel. It doesn't take place um, on battlefields. And there are other historical events that come into play. But I, I have this feeling, um, looking back at World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Gulf, first Gulf War, the second Gulf, looking at this, that, that we as a society seem to be fooling ourselves, thinking that we're pulling further and further away. That during World War II, everybody was involved. My mother, who was the youngest um, girl in a, in a large family, in the Midwest, she was the only one of her six brothers and sisters that was not actively involved in the World War II effort. Even her eldest sister joined the Marines and was an airplane, trained as an airplane mechanic. So, and she was still affected. And I, I have the sense that we increasingly feel um, that there's some people who are actively involved in, in war and the rest of us are not. And I think that's false. I think that, that war permeates society, that when there's a war effort, we all are engaged in one way or another. It affects us all. And that's really you know, one of my great um, concerns is that people think that they can say, oh, those are the people over there. That has nothing to do with us. I don't agree with that. I think that we're one world together and um, – it, all conflict is pervasive. Gotcha. Yes. So just, just, just a very um, curious question, because I, I was curious about the uh, personal connections to your book. Uh, are any of the characters' names uh, any personal connection to you? Like, did you name them based on any personal connection, or is it just kind of a randomized, you know, this is what you thought was a good name? Well, the novel starts in... Um, uh, Southern California, and I, I did that purposefully because I didn't want there to be anything autobiographical in any way in the book. I there are uh, I've lived in Southern California for two years, so I I know it uh, topographically, and other places I've spent a lot of time in Phoenix. There's a whole section, you know, there are a couple chapters in Phoenix. I I've been to these places, but they are not my home. So none of the characters are in any way related to people I've ever known. And I chose their names um, 
because they seem very appropriate for the time and the person, the character. So the, the the novel focuses on two of the family members: the young widow, Barbara, and his youngest son, Francis. And Francis is a, pretty much a pivotal character, and he's is kind of a lost soul who wanders trying to find his place. Well, um, you know, I think I, there may be in my head somewhere I had a little bit of St. Francis of Assisi in, you know, my head, this person wanted. But um, it just, the names just seemed to fit the characters. They definitely were not people in any way, just as in the same way that I didn't really want the, the characters to be connected to any individual I've ever known. Gotcha. What's next on Horizon? Any any new works in progress based on this one or something uh, different in the works? I've been writing a lot late, just very recently. I've been writing a lot of nonfiction um, while I've been promoting this book. And it's it's kind of a nice relief while I think also about the next book. And I'm sort of torn between two projects which I've been working on simultaneously. I took out... Um, a point of view character from this novel, which I'm kind of, I like very much, and I've been thinking about whether I want to go forth with her story, but I have another story also that I'm, I'm very interested in, so too early to really say. Awesome. Well, where's the best place we can find information on you, purchase your book, and more and more about you? Where can we go? Well, I think that um, you, you can certainly find more about me on the Internet. I'm on Twitter and Corkia Kiwi. I'm on Facebook. You, I have an author page, again, and Corkia Kiwi. Um, I have an author website, which I like to put all kinds of things up on. I put book um, suggestions, reading suggestions up on, and people can contact me through the contact page. That's also under Anne Corkia TV, and you can find my book really most places that books are, are sold. I think if you go, I know that they have it in, you know, the big bookstores like Barnes and Noble, and um, I think most independent books stores have it. And if they don't, if you ask them, they'll get it. And of course, you can find it online in Amazon or any of those um, online sellers too. All right. Well, thanks for calling and take care, and uh, leave the line open for our next guest. Okay. Thanks. It was lovely to speak to you. Take care, guys. Okay, fine. Thank you. You're listening to Author's Corner, powered by Life Improvement Radio, powered by Life Improvement Radio, live from the Mind Book Fair, and I'm with Peter Elvidge and Eric Remmel. Thank you for listening to Life Improvement Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and shall not be construed in any way as advice from Life Improvement Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by the producers, writers, or editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the expressed written consent of Life Improvement Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.